A cryptocurrency is a medium of exchange that is digital, encrypted, and decentralized. It is more like a virtual currency secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. They can be used to buy goods and services but use an online ledger to secure transactions. Cryptocurrencies use decentralized control, which means they aren't controlled by one person or government. On the 5th of February 2021, the Central Bank of Nigeria released a letter addressed to banks and other financial institutions stating that dealing in cryptocurrencies and facilitating payment for cryptocurrency exchanges are now prohibited. The CBN further instructed all banks and other financial institutions to identify individuals or entities who transact in cryptocurrencies or operate cryptocurrency exchanges and close the accounts of such persons or entities. This directive has elicited major concern amongst the public, with many worried about the potential negative effect it could have on Nigeria's growing cryptocurrency market and innovation in the fintech industry. Our guest is Adedeji Owunibi, a blockchain advocate and crypto forensic expert, and he shares with us the way forward in this controversial situation. A lot of people have takes on what cryptocurrency is, but I see it as a natural next step for money. And uh, if you go back memory lane, there are times we use cowrie. Just yesterday, I was discussing with some people on how stone is actually used as, as currency in an, in, a, in an ally called Yap Island. And I Googled it and I showed them, I said, this, this is just a stone. So people choose what they think currency should be across in, from time immemorial, you know, before we moved to coin, we moved to cowries. Sometimes we were doing butter at the time. So it's just normal metamorphosis, you know. So this is transforming, you know, to becoming um, the new money. Um, and of course, normally before you can take a shift, it takes a lot of controversy. But that is what is happening for me. Uh, uniquely, it is generally the next step for money. And um, if you're asking me, how did it come about? What is it all about for the layman to understand? Um, people believe. Uh, there's this group of people called the cyberpunk, you know, some few years back, sometime in 2009, 2008, they started uh, the searching. And to say, okay, this financial system, we don't believe in it. Um, we, we believe in their own um, opinion, government is manipulating uh, this financial system. And they believe government only allow people that they think they love to have this money to have it. So they are looking forward to which money, which, what can they work on that will liberalize everything. Whoever it is, or it was then, uh, he created this whole uh, money, you know, relating with his, uh, with his peers over the internet. And they're trying to rejig, you know, they're trying the money, they're working on it, they're putting corrections. And all of a sudden, this same uh, individual that we don't know, whether a group of people, whether a government of a particular country, nobody knows yet, you know, but we're still following the mystery. And um, he vanished with over a million um, Bitcoin in this wallet. If you multiply Bitcoin today, and uh, you just know that it's one of the world richest person that live, whoever that person is. But one funny thing is that he didn't use it. He is not spending it. He just disappeared. And the rest of us continue to ride on that well up to this moment. So tell me, um, I mean, you've mentioned that the fact that it's a currency of the future. Uh, is there any disadvantage? Okay, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these particular types of currency? Yeah, this currency is, 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 is simplifies payment. And I must tell you that. You know, um, if you want to make payment cross border, this is a denationalized currency. So, you, so to even look at it as a labor, you just believe that it has removed the issues of going to one corner, like um, where you find the Forex exchanges to change your era to get a dollar before you can do some things across the border. This one is say, hey, I belong to every country and you can use me to just transact across border at a click of button like everybody that has internet can have access to it. I don't have to go to bank. I just have uh, my, my phone and we, you can just transfer. So that seamlessness and that simplicity is one great advantage. And again, you know, the fees are cheaper, even though now there are arguments around um, gas fees, this Bitcoin fees that you have to pay. But then it's still cheaper. You can move a whole lot of money by paying just very minimal fees. And this, again, 
it is decentralized, meaning there's no barrier to who can actually send money, no much questions are asked. And I think that is where um, the disadvantages that we'll talk about later actually come. So for those who say that there is now a, a Bitcoin cabal, you know, same thing they were accusing the fiat money for, it's not happening. Uh, what would your comment be on that? You see, um, Bitcoin as it is has its own monetary value. You know, it has a whole monetary system and it is driven by, by scarcity, you know, and like, you know, your Naira depreciates, um, uh, inflation can eat it up, uh, your US dollar inflation can eat it up. And this is, you know, you know, you know, designed to actually be deflationary, meaning as more people come into it, it does not come out. And of course, they have another thing that just happened in 2010. Most people probably are not aware. But if you are in this space, you know, there's also, they have a, their own, uh, what they call a contractionary monetary policy. What central bank does to pull out money out of the economy, and when they think there should be money in the economy, they pump it back in. But in this case, this one only collects because, you know, the industry or the system that means this, it half every four years, meaning the supply of Bitcoin is reduced by half every four years. So many, and people are coming more to get it. So this thing is not available. It's going to be half every four years and people are getting enlightened, All everybody rushing to get a pie of it. So of course, by simple economists, you know, we say, we say when there's scarcity, the price will go up. There's more demand, the price will go up. So that is, that is the, the idea, you know, and I believe Nigerians are not missing out. Nigeria are there. And I believe you hold a lot of bags of Bitcoin too that will soon come for you to give me some portion of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the CBN uh, came up with this policy. Um, what's your take on the policy? The policy is ill-advised uh, in my own point of view. Um, but again, uh, you probably will not be preview to uh, regulators have some personal um, very deep insight to what most of us don't. Uh, but when you look at it superficially, and I want to just be in the public because it's, I don't have an insight to why they did that, but because most, most of the time policy makers, government have uh, reasons why they take drastic actions. At times it's not popular, but they probably need to take those actions that time. Maybe they will come out to tell us what that is. But on the, on the straight value of that uh, policy, it is not intended with the global standard of what is happening currently. Uh, that same day they ban it, uh, OCC in the United States licensed some other bank to custody it. You know? So a lot of banks now in US are licensed to actually custody Bitcoin. They are licensed to actually transact and make their own transactions very fast with stable coin. And so bank, central banks around the world are also researching and experimenting with this cryptocurrency in, the, in, 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 in what the world will call the CBDC, central bank digital currency. So it will be uh, like for me, like a somersault kind of for central bank to issue what they issue on a superficial uh, level. But like I said, there probably could be some uh, insight that is not visible to all of us. And we are shocked because uh, the ripple effect in the economy for us that are within the, that ecosystem and that small economy that is you know, blossoming in Nigeria, uh, we believe is, is, um, is not progressive and is, is very hasty and uh, the community were not carried along to share those concerns before that came out. Don't forget that I play within the compliance and investigation of this cryptocurrency space. So there's actually nobody playing that you cannot unravel with the technology that we do have. There's technical ability now to check what is doing, who is doing what on the blockchain. Even though it's pseudonymous, I had a publication earlier that is targeted at law enforcement. And I said, Bitcoin, the law enforcement's best friend. The reason is this. Blockchain on its own normal feature, any transaction conducted over that network is forever indelible. You can alter it, it is there for record. So it is it's not money for criminals. In fact, criminal that knows his onion will never interact with block, uh, Bitcoin because everything you do is traceable to the last point. But for that, if you give me that and I take it from you, you know, I disappear, nobody traces it. Abilidi, I foresee us doing a part two of this interview, but for now, uh, thank you for being on the show today. Um, thank you. All the best. Thank you very much for having me, Sophie. Bye-bye.